Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. My name is Jesse Tate. Um, I am the virtual director for APTA's um, virtual chapter. Um, you'll see two other faces with me here. Glenn and Justin have joined us. We'll be featuring um, South Africa today. So this is a super exciting webinar um, that I'm happy to bring to you. So um, before I hand everything over to our two guest speakers, um, I just want to brag on APTA a little bit. Um, so welcome to APTA. Um, if you are an existing member or corporate member, uh, welcome. You can tune out for the next 60 seconds while I do my spiel. Uh, but if you are new to APTA, APTA and you do not belong yet, we'd absolutely love to have you. So APTA is the Association of the Promotion of Tourism to Africa. So we are a community of lovers of Africa. Um, if you want to be an individual member, you can join for $45 a year. Um, I know we are all short on budget after what we all just went through, but if you can spare $45 um, for an individual membership, we would love for you to become one of our individual members. Um, if you are a corporate member, if you are interested in a corporate membership, whether you're a DMC, a lodge group, something like that, um, we would love for you to join as a corporate member for $400 a year. Um, I'm not going to dive too much into what all that entails. You can go to our website or I'm happy to um, deep dive with you. Uh, but basically, we do, we have different chapters across the, the U.S. So we have actual chapters in um, established in various cities, or you can join my virtual chapter, uh, where we obviously meet virtually. So um, that's a, just a little bit about our membership. We'd love to have you. I would be a horrible team member um, if I didn't at least touch on the rest of the volunteer members of our APTA executive board that you're looking at here. I'm part of a really, really great team. Um, this is our most recent picture at our last APTA forum. Um, unfortunately, we haven't had one in the last two years, but we have some really exciting news coming up. Um, I'm not going to steal Cheryl Thunder, our president, but we have some really exciting news for 2023 um, for our APTA National Forum. So um, wink, wink, stay tuned. All right, so I am going to um, hand everything over to our guest speakers, but I want to mention just a few quick um, housekeeping notes. Um, Glenn has joined us from South Africa, Cape Town, I believe, if I remember correctly. Justin's in New York, so he didn't stay up too late. But I would love for you guys to take advantage of their knowledge um, and their, their resources here. So please ask questions. You can type those through on the GoToWebinar control panel. I'll be manning those, and I'll make sure that we get to those at the end. Hi, hi, from New York. Uh, I'm Justin from South African Tourism. Many of you who have registered for today, I know some of you very well. Others of you I have yet to meet yet, but it is only my pleasure. Uh, on behalf of my colleagues, Judy Pillay, who is our Stakeholder Relations Manager, and Jerry Mpufani, who is our President of the North America Hub, warm, warm, warm South African greetings. Yes, I have been with South African Tourism for more than a decade now, and uh, the fantastic thing for me about all that time is just getting to see the incredible diversity of experiences that we have across the nine provinces, across the major cities, whether we're talking about adventure, culinary, wine, culture, art, wildlife, of course, um, and really coming to understand that South Africa is a destination that can be done for travelers of any budget. And you guys who are selling it right on the front lines know that. So we can do the most opulent luxury experiences down to that sort of budget-friendly big group travel South Africa really delivers. And it's all anchored in that beautiful South African unique hospitality, that warmth and friendliness and that sense of humor. That is always the most memorable part of any travel to South Africa. As you know, the good news is we've been reopened since November 2020. So we've had quite a while to get all the kinks worked out. And the good news is the travelers are coming back. They're showing that verifiable proof of vaccination with the QR code or that negative PCR test uh, 72 hours prior to arrival. Still on the ground in South Africa, you'll find visitors and locals alike wearing those face masks in public indoor spaces. And as always, no visa is required for our US or Canadian passport holders visiting for 90 days or less. A big thank you to everybody who is here that has been supporting us over the past few years. We are roaring back towards recovery and the US was actually South Africa's number one overseas market for 2021. So thank you, thank you to everybody who's been out there 
keeping that drum beat about South Africa, getting your clients down safely. We've just returned from Africa's travel in Daba. We came back after a two year hiatus, almost 700 exhibitors and nearly a thousand buyers from 55 countries made their way to beautiful Durban. And we all got back together in person for more than 22,000 meetings. It was fantastic to see our friends like Glenn and everybody in person again after so long. South African Tourism North America delivered 50 members of the hosted buyers and media group. That was the largest international delegation and they were making noise all across the uh, Durban ICC. We collaborated with our friends over at IGLTA to host an LGBT tourism industry networking event because we consistently see that LGBTQ travelers are first back to destinations, first back on planes after the travel restrictions have been lifted and South Africa has no here on the continent in terms of our warm and welcome friendly invitation for those travelers. If you are thinking that you have got to get back for Indaba next year, be sure to apply early starting about January for consideration. It's never been easier to get to South Africa and we owe a lot of last year's success for the 2021 numbers to our friends at United and Delta who continue flying travelers from the States to South Africa all throughout the year. Just this week, United moved their seasonal service from Newark to Cape Town to year round. So now there are three times weekly flights from Newark to Cape Town, and that complements the existing five times weekly flights that we have from Johannesburg. Great options there. And then they are very bullish on prospects for the future, and they are looking to expand with opening a gateway from Washington DC in November down to Cape Town. That's still pending the final approvals, but things are looking good. Not to be left out of the conversation, Delta, who's been servicing South Africa more than 15 years. In May, they doubled their service to South Africa from three times a week out of Atlanta to Johannesburg to six times a week. So more flights there for you to book at your leisure. And of course, Delta is also getting in on the act of expanding. They are looking to start that Cape Town route in November with three times weekly service from Atlanta. Good, good news. Of course, South African Tourism has just signed an MOU with Emirates. We'll be working to continue to mine that relationship to get travelers who want to go through Dubai. Tons of other brilliant options, as you would know, through Europe and other carriers in the Middle East are available also. What I'm excited to share with you today is our newest campaign, and it's called Live Again. When we think about the past couple years and how it has uh, restricted those movements, it's kept us focused on either close uh, proximity destinations that we could drive to, or maybe just a little bit short domestic flight. We know that our travelers are ready to get back out and live again. Some insights on our North American travelers that we think might help you today. We know all the research shows they are looking for excitement. They want to be exhilarated and get outside their comfort zone. They're open-minded. They want to experience new cultures and really immerse. They want to meet the locals. They want to find out their favorite places to go, their favorite restaurants to try. Fresh air, wide open spaces, and the restorative power of nature will continue to be a high priority. And after a couple years of hearing no a lot, they are ready to hear yes. So all of our job is to make it easy for them to say yes to South Africa in 2022 and beyond. And we believe that our destination is primed to deliver exactly what they want. An opportunity to reawaken, to feel re-energized and to reignite their spirit. We're gonna do that through our authentic unfiltered experiences across wildlife, across adventure, across culture, history. We're going to do it with beaches. We're going to do it with incredible scenic beauty and of course anchored by our city lifestyle experience. We're going to make sure that they feel confident that their investment in a vacation to South Africa is not just going to leave them feeling renewed and transformed, but it is going to help them feel good about the contribution to the conservation not only of the natural environment and wildlife, but in supporting local communities. So if Jessie is back now, I want her from her side to show you our Live Again brand piece. Quite sexy. 
Come, awaken again. Touch, smell, hear, taste life, drink it all in. Wade knee deep into wonder and fill the bucket list of your soul. Breathe again in the place humankind took its first breath. Laugh again, unmuted, in the land of a thousand tongues. Love again, unfrozen, in the warmth of our people and our sun. Feel again as you've longed to feel, as you were born to, made to, need to feel. Heart racing, thundering, soaring. Come. Connect with our people and rediscover what it means to truly live again. So we're coming back for just a couple of other things, which is to say, if it's been a minute since you actively were selling South Africa, if you've been focused on uh, more domestic uh, destinations, or if you've been selling more of East Africa or West Africa, then you may want to revisit the essay specialist program and just refresh there on the diversity of experiences that we're offering, the different regions that you might want to highlight. That's still available all for you there on essay specialist. So take a look at that. And then, as I said in the beginning, on behalf of our colleagues, we Thank you, thank you, thank you for hanging in there with us, for continuing to promote South Africa. Please reach out if there's anything that we can do for you from our side. Be sure that you are following us, especially if you're a Twitter user on at SA Travel Trade. That is the most up-to-date information that's coming out around new products, new flights, new experiences that you want to plug into. And then our other platforms at South Africa on Twitter, at Visit South Africa on Instagram, and Visit South Africa on Facebook are more consumer facing and they are really doing some great work to excite and energize your potential clients there. Well, I'm going to keep it short and sweet because I want to introduce our special guest, which is Glenn. Glenn is going to tell us all about what's new and happening from that side. Thank you and good evening from Cape Town, everybody, where I'm based and where I live and where our headquarters are. Um, as Jesse did introduce me, my name is Glenn McKeague. I'm the CEO at Springbok Atlas, a DMC in South Africa for the past 76 years. So what I want to talk about tonight, and thank you, Justin, for that complete overview on the destination. I want to just touch on new, exciting, immersive experiences, some new properties which have come along um, during the past what is now 27 months and what have we been doing down in South Africa? And thank you, Justin, for the punt. The USA has been our number one supporters since COVID uh, ended towards last year in September and uh, starting up again after Omicron in February, March, it's really been going well. So what is new? And let's start on the hotel side of what has developed in the last the last 27 months. And I'm going to start with Cape Town. The picture that you see is the more quarters. I put it in there because many of you would know Cape Cadogan, which is also part of the more hotel groups, which is adjacent to um, the more quarters that is closed for complete refurbishment and an upgrade and expansion. So wait for further news on that from the more hotel group. Um, the first new hotel in Cape Town is the Old Bank Hotel. Now, if, if you folks know and have been to Cape Town and know where the Taj Hotel is and heard of the gorgeous Georges, it's in the same vicinity. This is a 1902 building, colonial building, which was a bank, and it is now converted into a hotel with beautiful big rooms, original knotty pine floors and high ceilings, mostly for the FIT market, but something to consider if you want to be in the city center. We all know about the V&A that we mostly book, but sometimes people want to be outside of the hustle and bustle. 
another new hotel, not new, not taken over by the new Mark Hotel Group, the Winchester Mansions, renamed the Winchester Hotel on the promenade in Seapoint. This is about a seven to eight minute drive from the waterfront. Location fantastic on the promenade for evening walks, sunsets, bicycling, bicycling on the promenade. And they've been through a complete refurb. They were closed the longest of all the hotels. The famous courtyard and Sunday is your best time to be at the Winchester with the jazz brunches that they have in this courtyard. Like I mentioned, now part of the Newmark Hotel Group. Another Newmark Hotel, this is a completely new building and new hotel which is opened. I would say on the east side of the city, on the other side of where the ICC or the CTICC is and the Cullinan and the Southern Sun waterfront, more to the eastern side complete new building and opposite the Rockefeller Hotel, there's a whole precinct opening up, the East City Precinct. And this is where Marriott is also building two or three new properties. Some of them residences with shops, with hotels um, in a safe, safe environment. So that's the Rockefeller. <laughs> Moving to, and, uh, sorry, still staying in Cape Town, a very new Quirky Hotel, the Hotel Sky. There is one in Santon in Johannesburg already. They took over an old insurance building in Cape Town and converted it into the hotel. Fabulous location right opposite the convention center, nearly adjacent to the Southern Sun Cullinan as well. Quite bling as you can see, but your restaurants on the 26th and the 27th floor with the views are absolutely spectacular at night. And I'll get back to one of the experiences at the Hotel Sky. Very much a three-star type of client, uh, more budget. We could use it for school groups, university groups as well, because of a very good leading rate. Getting a little bit outside of Cape Town again, we know we have the southern suburbs, then we have the areas of Hout Bay, where we go out on, on, onto the Seal Island to go and view the Seal Colony. In, this, in the town of Hout Bay, which is on the way to Cape Point, is the Vida Nova Retreat. Again, if people do not want to stay right in the city area or in the waterfront, a more of a retreat type of, type of hotel. Getting out of the city into the Winelands area. Now, this is a Southern Sun Hotel. And just on that note, to update everybody, Sogo Sun branding has fallen away. There is still Sogo Sun, but all the Southern Sun Hotels, or Sogo Suns, as we pronounce it, Soho Sun, is now just going to be called Southern Sun Hotels. This is a historical old building, small hotel, 14 or 16 rooms only, in the heart of Stellenbosch, um, very much FIT geared, and fabulous location to do, your, to do your wine tastings from. And more and more of our USA and North American customers are staying in the winelands, the towns of Franschhoek and Stellenbosch. Um, a beautiful hotel, uh, um, every room has a fireplace as well for the winter evenings and an old type of farmer style, uh, uh, thatch style roofing as well. Two hours outside of Cape Town, um, natural selection have the new property called Lakervata Beach Lodge. Nice to combine this with possibly some of their properties in Botswana. This is in a nature reserve on the beach, a nature's lover's paradise. Lakravata, just for, for the interest, means lovely water or nice water. Lakra is a very common Afrikaans term that we use all the time. Kripos, between Hermanus and Hanspai, where Hanspai is also the place where we do the white shark, the white shark cage diving. We all know Kripos, but during the pandemic, they've closed down Garden Lodge. They've got Forest Lodge and Garden Lodge. Garden Lodge was completely rebuilt and now open to the public again. Um, there's the view from the lounge area, and then you can see Walker Bay, as we call it, where the whales also come in between the months of June, July through to November. Moving on to Johannesburg, this is part of the IHG Intercontinental Hotel Group. It's a new brand for them called the VOCO. This is called the Bank VOCO, situated in Rosebank. Now, in Johannesburg, mostly we use Santon, we use Rosebank, or we use airport hotels. Here you can see Link to the Rosebank Mall, fantastic location. You just walk around the corner and you're in the Rosebank Mall, um, and very good location also to get to the Gautrain, which takes you directly to the airport. 
Another quirky hotel, Radisson Red, a new brand of theirs. We've already got a Radisson Red in Cape Town in the V&A Hotel, and we've been using this more and more for the North American market. Now they've opened one in Rosebank as well. Um, you can see the style of the hotels, and we've been putting some student groups there, budget more budget conscious uh, FITs as well, but great location in the suburb of Rosebank. Moving on, another brand Hyatt, which has changed a little bit of a format of what they what they have. We've got a Hyatt in Cape Town, we've got a Hyatt in Rosebank, but they've they've wandered off into the apart style hotels, apartment style hotels. So you get a studio, you get a one bedroom, a two bedroom, all of them with kitchenettes. Sometimes good for the corporates, but also if you have got families that want to stay a little bit longer in Johannesburg and do their own cooking in their room, it's something to keep in mind. Part of the legacy group um, in Johannesburg is the Leonardo. Out of interest, this is now the tallest building in Africa. And on this picture, you can see where the other legacy hotel is, the Michelangelo, linked immediately to Santon Square and where the Mandela statue is. Um, here you can see the Garden Court, which is part of the Southern Sun Group, to give you an idea. This hotel is part apartments, part offices, and then hotel, like I said. Uh, part of legacy hotels now. Into the Kruger Park, a very exciting, lovely new product, which I'm going to see next month when I'm up in Limpopo and in, in Mpumalanga, is the Kruger Shilati or the train on the bridge inside the Kruger Park, not too far from Skakuza Rest Camp. It is a stationary train. It does not move. Um, to give you an idea of what your compartments look like, quite sizable, all en suite, and your game drives are done inside the park. And in this picture, you can also see the river, um, which the bridge, which where the train is built on the bridge. And that's a little update on most of the new properties, which I think could appeal to the North American market. Of course, there are many new bed and breakfasts, smaller boutique hotels, existing ones, which have done renovations. Some new restaurants, Cape Town, the longest stay possibly for anybody coming to South, South or Southern Africa. Um, we have a few new restaurants which I just want to touch base on. The La Colombe Group, which has a restaurant in, in Constantia in Cape Town, as well as up in France, has got two new uh, restaurants in the waterfront in their own building. It's not inside the shopping mall, it's outside the shopping mall, but in the entire precinct of the waterfront. Pier and the waterside, and I've recently dined at Pier, um, and I can tell you it is typical luck along culinary delights. Uh, another new restaurant at Tinswallow Atlantic. This is in Alpe. This is part of the Tinswallow Group, which also owns Tinswallow Game Lodge in the Kruger area. They've got the new Chef's Warehouse, which I dined at in February. We were first to arrive, and we were last to leave because it was one of those magic evenings that you just want to stay longer and longer. Just a little image of our culinary delights. The Test Kitchen in Johannesburg, or the suburb of Rosebank, um, the name the Test Kitchen, all very familiar, the top, top restaurant in Cape Town did close down, and he moved his restaurant to Rosebank and is calling it Carbon. Um, we know we had lots of difficulties getting bookings um, at the test kitchen, and it is now nice to know that we have such restaurants in Johannesburg as well. Moving on to some experiences, folks. That's the open top, uh, red open top bus, which is very popular, hop on our book, with about five or six different routes that they do throughout the city um, and, the, and the, even the peninsula down to Cape Point. Helicopter flips, that has become, or we still call it flips, trips has become very popular to do a trip over the, down to Cape Point and then go across to a wine estate for lunch and then you can come back with, heli with the helicopter or we can pick you up at the, at the wine estate and then take you, take you back to the city. Another popular helicopter uh, excursion which has been happening is to take a, a chopper from the waterfront where they launch from, close to the Table Bay Hotel in the VNA, 
out to 12 Apostles, which is only about a seven to eight minute uh, flight, very scenic, and have lunch at 12 Apostles, then get into the vintage sidecars and go over the mountain, Harpe, Constantia, and, and back to Cape Town. The view that you see down there is the beaches of Camps Bay. Um, then another new uh, experience in Cape Town or excursion, which is to, which is really hip and happening, is the street art tours in the suburbs of Woodstock and Salt River. This is merely a kilometre or two kilometres outside of downtown Cape Town. It's about a two to three hour tour. It's a walking tour with a guide showing you around the incredible uh, drawings and paintings on the walls in the, in the Cape Town suburbs. Um, another experience more for the younger crowd and getting back to the Sky Hotel in Cape Town, the one which was very bling and, and gold, they've got on top of the roof on the 31st floor a drop which is apparently the highest drop in Africa, um, of very daring, very scary with spectacular views and you can see Table Mountain in the background. Also popular now taking off waterfront uh, kayaking, you do it from the waterfront, here's a lucky person who's spotting some, some dolphins there and you will spend the morning and you can go out towards the sea point side as well. E-biking, extremely popular, very uh, often requested for the winelands and we do this for a half day winelands in the Franschuk area in particular which is more flat um, and you can visit up to three for wine estates. Um, this picture image here is on Nurtuk Beach, which is just outside of Cape Town on the way to, uh, just past Half Bay. Some travel trends that have been changed or, 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 or what we've experienced since, uh, since, since COVID and the pandemic. Um, people talk about longer stays in certain areas, less hopping around, but we found with the North American market, it's still very much Cape Town, the Safari, Kruger, possibly stop over in Johannesburg, Victoria Falls and Botswana. Um, family travel, multi-generational fam fa families traveling have doubled in the number of inquiries that, that we are getting. Very popular at the game lodges that we know and more and more of the game lodges are now introducing the family style travel where the kids get looked after by a ranger while the parents go out on their own game drive and they really do special things for these children. Um, get experiences, experiential travel, what uh, Justin spoke about, people want to take part in something, it must be an immersive experience, they want to go back that they feel they've done something and given back, and one of these being at Kwande, which is a Kwande Game Reserve in the Eastern Cape where the rhino uh, uh, tagging takes place, we've also had some people uh, experiencing a rhino dehorning at a game lodge, um, just some of the ideas um, that is looking after the animals and of course we always involve the people as well as the land and the animals um, and this is something in our suburb of, of uh, outside of Cape Town called Kayalicha, uh, one of the projects, we have so many projects that we, we go out into the townships where you can interact. Um, these are a group of ladies that have established their own vegetable garden and they're selling it back to the to the locals in the in the township, making their way and their own living. Um, and like I mentioned, we take them, we take people to help building um, of, of, of houses in the townships. We take them out to experience the, the ladies making the bee, the weave baskets, weaving the baskets, etc. There is just so much that we can include. Um, which then brings us to the end. Um, and there's so much more that we can we can talk about here. Um, but that is just a, a bit of highlights of what new products have come about, what new experiences, and, and what we must keep on focusing with. So at that note, Jesse, I'm going to hand back to you and you're going to pop over with a video.
I want to get to some questions really quickly. Um, and I appreciate uh, Glenn, you sticking around. I know it's a little bit later for you and Justin, thanks so much for sticking around. Please, please, please type through anything so we can use Justin and Glenn's um, knowledge here. Um, let's start at the top here before I just, you know, disappeared. Where would be, and this question can go to both of you, where would be the best resource um, for a South African packing list? I know that I have been on safari and to South Africa several times, but somehow I always get in a panic on if I, you know, the shirt that I haven't worn in 10 years, I might need um, on this particular trip that I go into. Do either of you have a general packing list? Um, yeah, I think we do. I can send that through. Uh, would I send it to you, Jesse? Sure. Yeah, I'll be doing yeah. a follow-up here. So a, a general packing list or a Safari 101. Um, I know that yeah. Safari and, you know, when you're getting into the city, you don't necessarily need all your Safari clothes. But, you know, it's hard to pack for both, you know, uh, Cape Town and uh, and your Safari. So, yeah, that'd be great if one of you can, um, can send that yeah. through. So I have put a link in the chat, which I think might be just between the three of us. Maybe you can grab that and put it in the wider chat. There's a link to our website there, which is called What to Wear When You Travel in South Africa. So um, we'll be doing a follow up, what not to wear, no, based on my own travel. <laughs> um, now, really, I think the broadly speaking, the key is layering, right, Glenn, that, you know, especially when you get into the bush areas to Cape Town, those things like that. The weather can vary wildly from morning to night in terms of the temperature. So the main thing the clients will want to do is make sure they've got some layers in there so they can have on something a little heavier in the morning or if the wind uh, takes a turn and then they can take it off when the sun is really uh, showing us its face. Yeah, and we, we really have we really have a complex weather pattern because where where I am in the Western Cape in Cape Town, we get winter rain July and August. Um and that is again the best time to go on safari um in our winter months, May through to August, because the animals move around more. But it is very cold in the morning. You've got your gloves, you've got your beanie, you've got two layers on. They give you ponchos for the vehicle. Some of the five star lodges give you water bottles as well. But by nine o'clock, you start taking them off when you're on safari because the sun is, is warming you up again. Whereas in Cape Town, the temperature stays pretty much the same in winter. Come to Cape Town in January, February, it's 35 degrees. It's fantastic summer and all rump. But you could have that afternoon thunder shower up in the Kruger Park on safari two hours and it moves over into the Indian Ocean. Sure. Here's the good news though about that, not to uh, belabor the point. With the exchange rate being so strong against the dollar, if you were to forget something at home and need to pick it up, like I just bought a new uh, jean jacket while I was in Cape Town, the exchange rate is very much working in favor of those spending the dollars that side. Yeah. I think you might need an extra suitcase for all the shopping you might do. And I did send that link to everyone um, in the chat. If you don't know how to open it, don't worry, I will include it in the follow-up. Um, I know I said at the beginning that I did not want this to be a COVID update, and I really appreciate both of you just highlighting the new stuff, the new exciting lodges, itineraries, activities, all that kind of stuff. So I really appreciate you guys doing that. Um, but if anyone missed it, would you mind walking us through the current entry requirements with COVID vaccinated and unvaccinated people? I don't know which one of you might want to start or well, Yep. So let, let me let me explain quickly. There's been a big hoo-ha about two weeks ago <laughs> at Johannes, Johannesburg Airport, and it's all clarified now that if you are fully vaccinated by a proven World Health Organization's vaccine, two of the Pfizer and all the others, one of the Johnson & Johnson, the Janssen, you must produce a QR code. Now, we know that many states in the U.S. have not got this QR code, but the QR code can be in print form or the QR code could be in electronic form, in other words, on your phone. Um, I just recently sent out a notification on various apps, three different apps, which American citizens can go and use to upload their vaccine CDC card, and that will produce a QR code for them. If you're unvaccinated and you're arriving to South Africa, you must produce a PCR negative test not older than 72 hours to enter the country. If you don't produce that QR code, they will send you to have an antigen test, which can be a little bit of a delay. It is pretty cheap. 
but it can be a bit of a delay. Um, uh, we hope that home affairs at our airports have now resolved that issue. Um, Justin, did you want to add anything on that? No, I think uh, Glenn has nailed it. The, when I was there, I went and checked downstairs to just see in person what the experience was like. And they are accepting a variety, as Glenn said, of QR codes. So if you're in a state, your travelers, where they have, uh, for example, in New York, we have the Excelsior Pass. I believe in California, they have one. So they can use that. Some people have been using for conferences, they use the Clear app where you sort of register your vaccine with that and have a QR code, that's acceptable. So there's a wide range that is, we mustn't let that be a thing that causes us to stumble or, um, or uh, feel deterred by it. Glenn has got a fantastic list, Jesse, that I think maybe we add to this follow-up mail that has some easy online places where the people could go if their state does not have one. But the fact yeah, is, so many Americans are vaccinated. We must, uh, like I was saying, make it easy for them to say yes. So more information on making that uh, more seamless. Yeah, exactly. I have a lot of, I'm getting some questions on how to actually get the QR code. So we'll help you guys um, walk through that in, in the follow-up here. Um, we've had some questions about um, malaria, just um, in terms of, are you, are you still required to take any sort of malaria medication? Does, do you guys want to touch on that? I know that's not yeah, new. So so malaria, malaria is still prevalent in South Africa and only in particular areas. Um, the Eastern Cape is clear, the KwaZulu Natal, I believe, is nearly clear. But the Kruger area, if you go into the Kruger Park and all the adjacent lodges, the Timberbatis, Manyaletis, uh, Sabi Sands, you need to take malaria tablets. And we recommend you consult with your GP and find out what is the tablet which is going to work best for you. So the Kruger Park area definitely uh, malaria tablets for, for passengers. Um, Madikwe Game Reserve and Pilanes Game Reserve on the on the western side of the country, you don't need to take malaria tablets. It's mainly the Kruger Park area, but consult with your GP. And I think your own, uh, uh, there is advice, travel alerts on that as well uh, by the South African uh, Home Affairs. Justin, any comment? I think, Glenn, you, you um, encompassed that really well. Yeah, for me, uh, we always contextualize it, right, to say that it's optional and that you're going to do it based on your personal health profile that you discuss with your doctor. Yeah, that's, that's exactly Yeah, for sure. Um, this is kind of a trick question, I think. Um, and, Glenn, I'll start with you. Um, what would you say is the ideal first time trip to South Africa for a city safari combo? I know that the options are endless, so I'm putting you on the spot yeah. here. But, uh, give us so, your best. <laughs> so it's a city and safari for a first time traveler. Now, we know Americans have short holidays and we try and do it between eight to 10 days, maybe pushing it to 12 if you can incorporate some weekends as well. We like to start with Cape Town because you have traveled a long way to get to our destination and Cape Town is always your longest stay minimum of four nights. Your first night is a late arrival because remember what time do those flights get in, the people are pushed. Then you've got three more days in Cape Town. There's so much to incorporate in Cape Town. City and Table Mount, Cape Peninsula, Winelands, Robben Island. It's And you've got to give people leisure time as well for shopping. So four nights minimum Cape Town. We've seen more North Americans staying in the Winelands areas. If they haven't got time to stay there, we will take them out there for the day or a half day. From there, we fly directly to the Kruger Park area. You can fly to three different airports in the Kruger Park area from Cape Town, Good Sprite, Skakuza, and Nell Sprite. Depending on your budget, you'll stay at a private game lodge, five, four star in, in a private reserve, or you'll stay just on the outskirts of the Kruger Park and do your game drives in. Um, so that's four or five nights plus three is seven nights. Um, and that, and maybe one night in Johannesburg, because Johannesburg has got a lot to offer from the Apartheid Museum, Constitution Hill, Soweto, and I can carry on and on, Lilies Lee Farm, Pretoria, the Union Buildings. That's South Africa only. Now, our North American clients often combine Botswana and Victoria Falls. So somebody wants only safari, they can do Kruger area and Botswana. Somebody wants to do city and safari, Cape Town and three nights. Four or five nights Cape Town, three nights on safari. Yeah. Justin, do you agree? 
Well, the only thing I would add, I, Glenn is uh, spot on as always. Uh, I love to start in Johannesburg, especially when the flights are originating there, the way to get in and really get a nice lay of the land in terms of the culture, the history. We're talking about the recent story, the long walk to freedom, the post-apartheid 94 South Africa, but we're also talking about ancient history, right? Just a day trip away, 45 minutes, the cradle of humankind. I think Johannesburg helps to ground the whole beginning of the experience. Apartheid Museum, like Glenn said, uh, visit to Soweto. We've also got, I just stayed at this Boko Hotel that he was talking about in Rosebank, not to be missed, fabulous area to, to lay in there. You near the Keys Art Mile in Rosebank, you can see incredible galleries, that sort of stuff there as well. Fantastic restaurants. Uh, yeah, I think Johannesburg is not to be missed. Cape Town, obviously one of our jewels, lots of time there. Uh, as the space, because you know, luckily recovery is starting to boom, as Glenn was uh, agreeing, as we see more and more places filling up, I think we're going to be looking at some of the safari options outside of the traditional sort of Kruger and Sabi Sands area. KZN is fabulous. There's a new product there, Babanango Game Reserve, who I know someone on the call yeah. is, uh, is working with. There are um, uh, incredible places. I was just at Tanda, that side in KZN. Yeah. And then, of course, we've yeah. got Madikwe happening. We've got the Waterberg area where you can do it, the Eastern Cape, Shamwari, yeah. those sort of things, yeah. Samara, et cetera. Yeah. So we, we're not at a, a shortage of options. It's just about if you begin to see some that are filling up, expand where you think you might move the people. Yeah. yeah, just want to add on that. There's been an age-old argument of do we start with Cape Town? Do you start with the relaxing part or do you end with a and end with a safari, which is the highlight, and you go going home with a thrill? It's been a long, long argument of which one first. But thanks for Justin for your input too. That's why I said this is a this was a trick question. So there's, no, yeah. there's definitely a right answer. There's, and I'm, no, there's no wrong way to do it. That's the thing. Yeah. Once you get them yeah. on the airplane, once you get them down on South African soil, they are going to have one of the most memorable experiences ever. I know we're talking to a group of experts that know that firsthand. Yeah. So you cannot go wrong in the places that you're going to put them there. Really, the the tourism offerings that we have, the infrastructure, all like I was saying, anchored by that people experience. Uh, you, you can't you can't go wrong for sure for sure um i just want to spend maybe two or three more minutes i know we're getting close here and i didn't help being gone for five minutes of the presentation anyhow but i want to get to this one and um glenn i'll give you one and justin i'll give you one what would you consider the hidden gem in south africa something not to be missed i know you guys just kind of gave us some really really great um, in terms of um, different regions of South Africa, city, safari, blah, blah, blah. Is there something that really, really just you personally think is super special that maybe we wouldn't even think of over here um, just when we're, you know, curating our typical safari? Glenn, what's your hidden gem? The, the, <laughs> there's a lot. There's a lot. I would say a hidden gem. We all know Cape Town. We all know safaris. But a, a sleep out at a safari lodge um, is something on a three night stay, which is something really, really special and something you will never forget. We have couples that uh, after, after the first few hours, they radio in and said, I want to come back. But majority of the time, people will spend the night out in the treetops in the middle of the Sabi sand or in the Timbavati or Madikwe, wherever they have sleep outs. Um, that is something that you can go home and tell your family, your friends, and make them envious. And that's immediately off the top of my head. Of course, I'm a born and bred Cape Townian, so my hidden gem is this city. I'm born here, I've lived, went to school here, I studied here. Um, Cape Town is a hidden gem by itself. Safaris we've got all over the country, but Cape Town is something really special. And recently, again, voted by the UK Daily Telegraph as the top one of the top three, in the top three cities um, not to be missed. Um, Justin, let's hear from you. Yeah, well, I will say uh, one that is not so hidden, but is not typically in the first sort of round of <laughs> trips that are being packaged and sold. And then I'll say one more hidden. So the not so <laughs> hidden, I would say, is Durban side, right? And having just again been there during the travel in Daba, there are lots of incredible opportunities when you get over on that side, starting with the warmth of the Indian Ocean. 
right? So if the clients are a sort of water sport enthusiast, that is the side to get them into the water. You've got the incredible beaches, the Golden Mile, of course, the um, Zulu culture. You're getting that huge influence in the food from uh, the Indian culture, that side. So I'm thinking of that. I'm thinking of all the incredible curries, incredible hotels that you might have uh, known about, the Oyster Box, the Beverly Hills. There's also a new property that's just opened there in Umschlange um, with the Hyatt. So you'll want to see that. Uh, that's on my mind. And then, of course, you can get into the Valley of a Thousand Hills. It's a day trip out to the Mandela Capture Site through the Midlands Meander. You can go to the Howitt Waterfalls there. So that Durban KZN experience, Isimangaliso Wetland Park, um, that, that really, I think, is something, especially for returning clients, that's worth considering. And then my more hidden gem, something that just really um, was exciting to me, I did a couple years ago, is actually in the Free State, right? So like a Bloemfontein Clarence kind of thing. There's the Golden Gate Park that's that side. It is stunning. It's a little bit like seeing sort of the Grand Canyon this side in terms of the rocky outcroppings and that kind of thing really like that. Clarence has got a lot of cool, interesting art things. It's sort of like wide open kind of farmland, breadbasket of South Africa. Um, some interesting uh, historical and cultural things to see in Bloemfontein, some historic churches where the ANC was founded and things like that. So really for like a deep dive returning client, that might be something interesting. And you could drive there from Johannesburg, right? It's kind of a driving trip from that side. No, thank you guys for that. This is why I have you guys here. I mean, you guys are such a wealth of information. I know that we can all kind of get in our, just not a rut per se, but people are asking for the same things, the same itineraries, yada, yada, yada. So it's really nice to hear from you guys and just what's different and what's new and um, all that good stuff. So I think that's a really great place to end. There were some more questions that came through. What I'm gonna do everyone is I'm gonna send this list to Justin and Glenn. Don't worry, we'll answer every single one of those questions um, and we'll get them to you in just a whole um, you know, Excel Q&A format. So in case you, you know, tuned out or missed, missed something, we can get that. Um, so Justin and Glenn, I'm gonna make you do a little bit more work and just make sure that we answer those questions. Um, That's fine. So I thank you, Glenn, for sticking around a little bit later. Justin, thank you so much for joining us from New York. You guys, thank you so much for your support of APTA. Again, if you are not a member, please email me virtualchapter at apta.biz. I'm happy to talk to you about virtual membership, or if you go on our website and see a chapter where there is an established um, uh, existing chapter, happy to dive into that with you. Um, we would love for you to be part of APTA, and don't forget some really exciting news pertaining to APTA National Forum in 2023. Um, with that, I'm going to sign off. Thank you so much for your patience. I'm going to go pour a glass of wine. I know it's only two o'clock my time, but that was so stressful. And again, I apologize for my little hiccup, but um, <laughs> you guys were, were champs, I heard. So thank you so much. Everyone have a great rest of your day. Talk soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you, everybody.